This is Sean Cranish, the EMF Explorer from ElectroHealth.com and today I have my water pipes that come into my house behind me and we're going to be talking about magnetic fields on plumbing pipes. This is a very common problem and it's something that we want to mitigate or get rid of and it's something that everybody should check for in their house because we see it all the time. And magnetic fields, as you may know, can cause all sorts of health problems. There's been lots of research and studies that associate magnetic fields with cancer and other serious health problems. So what we're talking about here is electricity, alternating current from our electrical power grid, from our homes and from our neighbors that get on our metallic plumbing pipes. So I'm going to show you my system and what I did to stop it and I'm going to show you that the problem is very real. I apologize for my voice as I'm getting over a cold right now, but let's get started. On the left, this pipe is the service pipe. This pipe is the pipe that comes through the wall in the basement. This is actually a lead ser service, so it's a lead pipe hooked up to a brass cutoff valve. Uh, there's some steel in here. Here you have the water meter that's brass, so it's conductive all the way through here. And then on the other side you have a brass fitting, some copper pipes were conductive through to here. Originally in the house everything was copper and, and uh, steel, so the whole system was conductive. Now I've taken out some of that steel and replaced it with PEX, which is PEX or cross-linked polyethylene. That's a plastic kind of a flexible pipe, non-conductive. That's what solves the problem. But originally this metal pipe came around and split off these two directions. One went up one went down. So the current had two possible ways to go. So I had a plumber come, install the PEX, and as he installed that PEX, the magnetic fields throughout the house went to zero. See, normally what happens is electrical current from our power system, from our neighbors, from our house, and just going through the earth, because most of the current that we use actually does travel through the earth at some point, our plumbing systems are grounded, or hooked into our uh, main breaker panel. So usually a lot of times our, our electrical system in our house is hooked to our, our plumbing, our metal plumbing network. And that's also hooked to ground and to neutral because those are bonded together. Ground and neutral are the, sa are the same in effect in, in North America. At your main breaker panel, the ground wire that often goes to a ground rod or goes to our plumbing system like this, and the neutral wire that goes out to the power lines, those are hooked together it's one connection at the main breaker panel. So what happens is a lot of this high frequency current on our systems is, is looking for a path of less resistance. It's, it's looking for high surface area and pipes offer a very good um, uh, low resistance electrical connection. And so rather than take the neutral wire as it should, it often goes on pipes and travels uh, other routes through the earth. So since the problem is already fixed here, what I've done is I've installed two jumper wires. It's just a braided copper cable. And what that's going to do for me is that's going to simulate how the system was before I applied the fix, before I had the plumber come and put in the plastic pipe. And you only need a, a couple feet of plastic pipe. One or two feet will do it. So you don't need much. It's not an expensive thing to have a plumber come and do this. But first, you need to measure for the problem. So what I'm going to do here is hook these wires back up and we're going to recreate the problem because immediately once that electrical connection is made again there's going to be current flowing through these wires current flowing through the wires and flowing through the pipes so the current's going out to the the city water piping grid that's where it's coming from this this water pipe is acting like a wire right now and it's carrying current out the current is also traveling in my house down through my floor out to other plumbing, out to my hot water heater. You can see there's corrosion on this pipe. That uh, electrical current on plumbing pipes increases corrosion. So now there's electrical current flowing there. And you may say, well, how do we know that? This is the tool that I recommend using. This is a tri-field meter made by Alpha Lab. And we carry this on our website, electrahealth.com. And we would definitely appreciate if you supported us by using our store to, uh, to for all your EMF needs and we can help you along the way with personalized help. So as you see when I approach this wire here 
the reading, which is in milligauss, increases. So now we're up to 100 milligauss. As I pull back from the wire, that reading goes down. But you can see it comes out quite a distance. I've measured these kinds of fields 10, 15, 20 feet away from the plumbing pipe. We could be probably on the other side of the room and we'll pick up when this pipe is connected. Now watch something interesting. Hopefully you can still see, maybe I'll set this here so you can see that. So we have an electrical connection right now and we have, we have milligauss, we have a magnetic field emanating from the pipe. The magnetic field shows us that there's electrical current. Whenever you have electrical current, you have a magnetic field. Let's disconnect these wires a second. As you can see, the magnetic field drops to zero or near zero, what it was in the background level. If we touch the wires, it goes back up again. Now the current's flowing. Now the current has stopped. This is where we want it to be. We, want, we do not want electricity on pipes. Pipes are not designed for electricity. Electricity should stay in the wires. This here is actually a form of pollution that's common in, in America, in North America, and probably other countries as well. But this, this electrical pollution on the ground is a common problem and it shouldn't be there. This needs to be fixed, as this can cause health problems. Now besides the tri-field meter, or a Gauss meter, which that's what we use it for, besides using this meter to measure it, we could use another Gauss meter. This is made by the same company, but this is a digital Gauss meter. So you can see the milligauss goes way up. And don't mind the reading discrepancy. The uh, well, One meter is closer than the other, and, and all the meters vary. We're not so worried about the reading as far as what number it is, because there is no safe level. This is all artificial EMF, man-made EMF. This isn't found in nature. We don't have alternating current magnetic fields in nature. So, this is something that we don't want. This is something that only comes from our use of electricity. So really want it to be zero. But the lower the better, obviously. But my choice of meters is still the tri-field meter. This is the one I use when I go into homes. It picks up virtually everything. Super easy to use. You can see that it has three settings. Well, two settings that, that, that we use. It has four in total. It has a magnetic 0 to 100 milligauss. That's the one we usually use it on. It also has a magnetic 0 to 3. That's a finer, a finer tuned setting. If we really want to, to uh, hone in on something specific and see where we're at, usually we use it on the 0 to 100. Now, the electric field setting and the radio microwave setting on the meter, while they're there, I don't recommend using them. They're not sensitive enough to be useful for health reasons, to pick things up, and so using them could give you a false sense of security. I would recommend ignoring that they're even there. Use the tri-field meter from electrohealth.com. Use it just for the magnetic settings. Use it as a Gauss meter. It's one of the best out there and definitely the best in its price range. So you're going to be very happy with this meter as it's going to show you a lot that would otherwise go unseen. It's triple axis, so you can point it any direction you want. It doesn't matter. It'll pick up everything. I'm going to show you with yet another meter that this electrical current exists. So I've got to hook the wires back up here, screw them back together, get that current flowing again. This is a meter that I carry with me. It's not one that I recommend getting because most people don't need it. But this is a meter that comes in handy for measuring for ground current and measuring for current in places where it shouldn't be. What this, this is a, a, a clamp meter or an amp meter. This measures current in amps. And what you do with it is you, you put it over one wire. Now here we have a pipe and we have a wire. I'll put it over both and you'll see that the reading will be the same no matter where I put it. So first I'll clip it around this wire, and you can see we have a reading of 1.16 amps. That's quite a bit of current. That's a lot of current, actually. In certain settings, it, it takes far less than 1.16 amps. I believe it takes around 50 or 80 milliamps. I'll put a correction on this video if that's, if that's incorrect. But it, it doesn't take much to actually stop a human heart, so this is way more amperage than it's needed to stop a heart. Now, if I
put my right left hand here and my right hand down there, I may be inducing current into my body across my heart and that could be potentially harmful. I don't think it would hurt me here, but I'm not going to experiment on myself and I recommend you not either. This is another reason why this problem needs to be fixed because I'm sure people have been killed in showers. I know they have overseas a lot when electrical current gets on plumbing and um, I'm sure there's been many cases of heart attacks in showers that were actually due to electrical current. But, but here, as you can see, so we have 1.16 amps over the wire. We'll check it again. 1.04. It's going to vary as neighbors in the area because this current doesn't necessarily come from my house. I can actually shut off my main circuit breaker and the current can remain. So this could come from neighbors as well. I can clamp over the actual pipe here and we'll have the same amount. 1.03, 1.04. It doesn't matter where I clamp. I can clamp around this pipe down here as well. Whoop, that's on the wrong side of the wire. You can see I clamped above so it has nowhere to go. It would actually be down here that I need to clamp. So you can see the current's actually flowing through that pipe. 1.06 amps. Same amount of current is going to be all throughout this system going on the pipe. And once again, electrical current should not be flowing on pipes. It should be on electrical wires where it belongs. This is a form of pollution that needs to be fixed. So now we've proven that the current is here. We've proven it with three different meters. We could use other meters as well, but that should be sufficient to, to prove that it's here. We've proved that it's flowing over this wire, this little jumper I created. Now, you won't need to create a jumper like this in your house because we actually want this to be disconnected. This was just for demonstration purposes to show you the problem. So, now on to the solution. The solution is to, to use a plastic piping. And what we want to do is take out a small portion, could be one foot or two foot, that's plenty, of the metal pipe coming from the service, coming from outside your home, that comes into your home. This is the metal pipe here. Usually you have to do it on the other side of the meter. This would be your, your home side. This goes to the, all the, the plumbing in the home. And then this side goes out to the street. So usually on this side, on the home side of the plumbing, is where you need to take out a small portion of pipe. They do make things called dielectric couplers and things, but it's really not necessary to get a specialized piece of equipment. Um, most All plumbers are going to have PEX. You can pick this up at the store. There's even videos online where you can do it yourself. Um, PEX piping, it's really not hard. But if you just want to have a professional come and do it, they can do it in probably a half hour and be done with probably around $100, $150, shouldn't pay, have to pay more. Um, <clears throat> so what you do is, on, on your side of the plumbing, before the pipe splits off, as you can see, my, mine splits off right here close to the meter. Other pipes may split off far, further away from the meter, but the point is you want to get it while it's still one pipe, like right here before it splits off. Okay. By doing that, you've completely broken that circuit. So there's no longer a, a continuous metal conductor that can be part of a circuit, that can be part of this current that's looking for a path to go. So once you break that off with, with the, uh, the plastic pipe, you eliminate the current 100%, you eliminate that magnetic field. Now keep in mind, the magnetic field doesn't just go in your house near your meter, like we're demonstrating here. That magnetic field will go along this pipe the whole way of the house and it can split off, it can go multiple directions, and it can go out 10, 20 feet. So it can fill your entire living area with an oscillating, a back and forth, back and forth, positive and negative, positive and negative, oscillating magnetic field. That's a push-pull, 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 push-pull. Something your body is not going to encounter in nature, or something that we didn't encounter in nature until we had electricity. That can also be high frequency, so it doesn't necessarily just have to be the 60 hertz there can be higher frequencies than the 60 hertz on there as well. And those higher frequencies are more energetic. So, by simply installing some plastic pipe, you can eliminate that problem. If you do have any wiring, you would need to unhook the wiring. There are building codes and things, um, so you might want to check your area. As for me, I leave mine disconnected. 
I don't want electricity on my pipe, pipes, and if I hook up, if I hook the ground uh, jumper wire back up, we're going to have electricity on the pipes. The power company needs to fix their problem. They need to keep their electricity on their wires. So I'm not going to have a magnetic field in my house that's going to affect my family and my children. This is a very easy fix, and this is what I recommend doing. This will completely eliminate the magnetic fields coming from current electricity on metal plumbing pipes. And once again, the, the, the tool that you really want to use is the tri-field meter from electrohealth.com. And you can actually just put this on the 0 to 100 range and walk around your house with it. And the way to know, the way to tell is if you get, get up to a plumbing pipe and you see that needle go up, and then you back away, you see the needle go down. You can also come at it from a different angle. You come from below or from above to verify that you are measuring the pipe and nothing else nearby, nothing electrical nearby. But it's pretty, ob it's pretty obvious because when you get right up to the pipe, you'll see that, that needle go way up, often max out. And that shows you that you have electrical current on there. You don't need any other tools to, to verify that. That's enough. So with that, if you find that in your house, call a plumber, have some PECs put in, and that should solve your problem. This is Sean Cranish, the EMF Explorer from ElectroHealth.com, signing off. And I hope you enjoyed this video today, and I hope you found the information in it very useful. And this information, I hope that you can use it to make your living environment, your energy environment, a safer place. So please like our videos and check out our web store. And by supporting us, we'll be able to continue making videos and putting out the best information we can to help you take care of your EMF issues and your energy environment. You can do it yourself. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. And uh, you can help your friends and your family as well. These problems are everywhere. And by helping each other, we can all live a healthier life. Thank you.